This video describes how to enter outstanding historical transactions into QuickBooks. These are transactions such as open invoices, unpaid bills, and payments made and received from the start date of your company file to today. Entering historical transactions helps ensure that your QuickBooks records will be completely up to date going forward from your start date and that your reports will reflect your business accurately. And fortunately, you don't have to enter these transactions right away before you even know how to use QuickBooks. Just watch these videos in the course and then start using QuickBooks for your current day-to-day -day transactions. You can enter the historical transactions later when you find the time. But just keep in mind that the balances in your accounts and the figures in your reports might not be accurate until you enter all the transactions back to your start date. When you are ready to enter historical transactions, Come back to this video to remind yourself how to do it. There are a couple important things, well, let's say three important things to keep in mind when entering historical transactions. First, when you enter an historical transaction into QuickBooks, use the date of the original transaction, not today's date. By default, QuickBooks uses today's date or the last date that you entered. So when you create an historical transaction, just double check that the date in the QuickBooks date field matches the date of the original transaction. The second thing to remember is that when you create these historical transactions in QuickBooks, and let me just open an invoice to show you what I'm talking about. You should make sure that the print later or email later checkboxes are not checked. And this is because you are just recording an invoice you've already sent and you don't want to send the invoice or any other transaction to the customer again. The third thing is that historical transactions should be entered in a particular order. And the QuickBooks homepage kind of helps you with that order. So let's go over the homepage and I'll show you what I mean. So transactions on the homepage are laid out on the homepage with arrows. The arrows show the workflow, and that is pretty much the order to follow when entering historical transactions. So let's start with vendors. The first three I will talk about apply only if you track inventory. So you would first enter the purchase orders if you use purchase orders, and that way when you enter a bill for the inventory, you can associate the bill to the purchase order. After entering the purchase order, you can enter the bills for the inventory. And you either enter the bill when you receive the inventory, or you enter the bill after you receive the inventory. So that covered inventory bills. And when you're ready to record bills for expenses, you would choose enter bills. And before paying bills, if you have any credits with a vendor, you would need to enter the credits. So to do that, enter bills and change this from bill to credit. So now that all the bills and any credits you have with vendors have been entered, you can record the payments you've made. So pay bills. So here you would select a payment you made on a certain date, and you need to make sure that the date in this field matches the date that you actually made the payment. And you also need to make sure that the account is the correct account you made when you paid the bill. And here you don't really want to print it, so select Assign Check Number, because presumably you've already paid and you're just recording a check you've already written. Okay, I'm going to cancel this. And we're ready to move on to customers. So for customer transactions, enter them in this order. Estimates first, if you use them. This way, when you create an invoice, you can use the estimate as the basis for the invoice. Then enter the invoices from the company start date to today. Enter each invoice in chronological order from your start date using the date of the original transaction. And if you use statements, enter the statements in chronological order. After entering the invoices or statements, record any payments received between the start date and today. And here you would choose the customer and just make sure that the date in this field matches the date you actually received the payment. 
If you get paid at the time of the sale, you record these payments on sales receipts instead of invoices. For historical sales receipts, enter each sale in chronological order from your start date using the date of the original transaction. So after you enter the invoices, statement charges, or sales receipts, and record any payments, your customer balances will be up to date. If you've given any refunds or credits to customers, you would enter them here. Next, you need to record these payments from invoices and sales receipts as deposits. And here you would select the payments you made on a particular date and click OK. And here you need to make sure that this date is the date you actually made the deposits and this is the correct account. You would repeat these steps for each separate deposit you made on different days. And now for the final phase of historical transactions. And that's banking transactions. These are checks you wrote other than to pay your vendors and deposits you made other than from customers. As you entered the historical transactions, QuickBooks recorded checks to vendors as you paid the vendor bills and deposits of payments from customers. So you want to make sure that you don't duplicate those that QuickBooks has already recorded for you. If you wrote checks after your start date for items other than vendor bills, for example, you wrote a check at the office supply store, enter these checks in the Write Checks window. In the Write Checks window, enter any checks you wrote that were not for bills. And you want to make sure Print Later is not selected. And in the Number field, type the actual number of the check. And this is because you don't want to actually print the check. You're just recording a check you've already written. And you would fill in the rest of the check as described in the video that covered writing checks. And now you can enter any deposits made between your start date and today. And to do that, click Record Deposits. And on this screen, these are payments from customers, and that's not what you're recording here. So cancel. And here you would enter any deposits you made that were not from customer payments. And again, check that the correct account is selected and the date of the actual deposit. If you made any transfers between accounts after your start date, you record that using banking transfer funds. One more thing I should mention. What if your opening balance in the bank account came from a bank statement dated before your company start date? Even though those transactions would be from before your start date, you should enter all uncleared checks and deposits between the statement date and your company start date, so they will be there when you reconcile the account. As with your bank accounts, you need to enter any credit card charges and payments you made to your credit card account between your start date and today. And if you have a savings account, you would need to record any historical transactions to that account. So after entering historical transactions, a good report to look at is Open Invoices. And here you can compare your stack of paper invoices with the report to make sure you've entered them all. And same with unpaid bills. Compare the list in the report with your stack of bills to make sure you've entered all the bills in your stack. And finally, after entering historical transactions, have your accountant review everything to make sure you're starting QuickBooks with accurate numbers.